go right away? It's just automatically right there. Yeah, you got to click on it to do it. Yeah. We are live. Hold on one second. Yeah, one second. So we're live on yeah. DJ Jenny Show is not live. All right, perfect. Let me share this. See? Right away. StreamYard is like live. instant. Perfect. One second. Good, I'm going to mute this. Soma, do you want me to, let me see if you want me to send this to you. I just sent it to you on Messenger, too. Um, I'm going to put headphones in just so there's no echo, too. Okay. I'm sending it to Chris. He's going to tune in. All right, so let me do the 30-second countdown. Finish. You guys get ready, and then when it, 30 seconds is over, then it'll be on, okay? In a minute. Just give her a second so she can get ready on her end, and then we could do the countdown. Well, yeah. Give her time. Don't rush her. Don't rush someone from Hollywood. You can't no, no, do no. that. No, no, I'm saying when she's ready. You let me know when she's ready. <laughs> Look how beautiful you are. You're stunning. Stop. Oh, my God. Your face is like glowing. You did like makeup and everything. I feel so bad. I was like, I dressed up for this. <laughs> no, I had an audition before, so I was already ready, which was convenient. Because otherwise, normally, I don't take that much time. To put well, I was going to say, well, regardless, what would you be in a hoodie or something? Like something relaxing? Wicked clothing. Oh. Yes. All right. So let me know real can quick. You hear me? Got that notification. I can hear you. Um, on my Facebook, you shared a video. Okay. Yes. Let me send it to that's, that's, my mom. Yeah. Thanks for that. It's seller. Okay. All right. Good. Let's do the countdown. We're going to come back and I'll start the show. Soma. All right. Here we go. Let me get started on Facebook here. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. Welcome to the DJ Danny Show on HamiltonRadio.net, stream HR1. We are blessed and honored to have some Chaya here with us again today, especially throughout the pandemic and everything and your craziness that we've all been dealing with, especially like acting and musician-wise. So I'm glad to have you back today. I'm so happy to be back almost a year later. This is yes, great. <laughs> but it's like the best thing because our instant gratification when we first met, a lot of our fans do not know how close we are, even though we have not met in real life yet. <laughs> We're going to call for this goal sometime, somewhere. But it no matter how long it takes, <laughs> we're going to be. So, um, no, I think it's really amazing. I know we have a lot going on with you. You had a couple new song releases that just happened. And just a different vibe and everything that you're going to be changing over to and working with. So let's start a little bit. Do you want to go to your music first? Do you want to talk about anything acting wise that you've been doing? Are you pushing more? Because I know you do auditions still. So you yeah, we're in the we're in the middle of pilot season right now. It's February. So I was kind of curious to see how pilot season would work this year, considering the virus and everything. So everything's been online and it's been really interesting because it gives me the ability to be in more than one place at once. So I'm not mm -hmm. just auditioning being in Los Angeles. I can audition for any city, which is amazing. And it's overwhelming, but in the best way. <laughs> well, that's, it's something different when it's overwhelming, but the good news is, I guess, being an actress and being out there mostly, even though it is virtual, do you still feel like you have that maybe like butterfly situation or anything where you have to deal with a whole bunch of people in front of you going before you go to an audition? <laughs> or is it more of like they just contact you when it's your turn and you're just like right on the spot? It's a bit of both, honestly. Some auditions are tapes. So I'll record myself and my mom will read for me because she's so sweet. She'll read for me and then we'll edit it and send it in. But then other times uh, there is like a live audition virtually through Zoom or um, other streaming thingies um other video chats mm -hmm. and i'll be nervous for some and i'll be not nervous for others because i'll be so busy with the other things going on too mm -hmm. but for instance for today's like 
it was so last minute. And so I didn't really get a chance to get nervous, which was kind of good. So I was kind of just like in it. All right, let's go. Let's do it. And it was fun. Yeah. And it but was- it is kind of weird, though, like talking to people uh, in a little box too, like even you. <laughs> You're <Yeah>. so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> That's different, too, because without everything, when it used to be all kind of like in person before the pandemic, do you feel like anything kind of changed, like the way your audition process or anything happened? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I used to get so much more nervous when I was going in person. But at the same time, as nervous as I was, when I would go in person, it would be done so quickly and I would leave and then it would be off of my mind. Whereas now it's like if I'm doing a self tape and I'm recording it myself, Mm -hmm. I'm a perfectionist. So I'll just keep recording it over and over and over again until I get it right. And sometimes I just don't stop because I'm like, no, I can do it better. And my mom will have to be like, okay, we've been doing it for five hours. You need to stop. Like (laughs) we got to call it. (laughs) It is definitely amazing that your mom, you know, officially like cuts that down because being an actress and everything, I mean, you can go crazy over yourself. Like you could basically just try to get every single line correctly or the different emotion behind each line and you're making yourself go crazy but you'll go right to sleep right afterwards because you'll be extremely (laughs) exhausted you know girl that is exactly what happens sometimes in the middle of taping so what happens is it's like my room's not like the biggest so my mom sits on my bed behind the camera to read for me so so she doesn't have to stand the whole time and sometimes like in the middle of the tapes we'll both just like knock out because we're just exhausted from talking and just doing it over and over and over again we'll just knock out in the middle of it and take a nap and then wake up and start again <laughs> oh my god wow no i think that's the best thing though that you also have your mom to like guide you through everything you know like she's your number one person in your life you're a huge inspiration and in everything that you use for especially are we taking phone calls no, 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 yeah. it's, it's- <laughs> <laughs> we're getting phone calls. i'm so sorry technical error on our end <laughs> yeah, we're good I have no idea. I was like, I didn't give the studio number away. So if somebody's calling, um, oh. we're not. Um, up, so <laughs> no, I am really lucky to have my mom. She, I gotta say, does fifty percent of the work with me. Like, oh my god, God bless her because she works so hard. I, like harder than me probably because it's not even her job to do this, but she just does it because she cares about me and believes yeah. in me. Well, she wants to see a lot of success with you, and I feel like a lot of us especially me being a true friend and a great, you know, just, uh, I love being inspiration wise just to get you out there interviewer and everything. So knowing that you have us to guide you and push you and strive and succeed, I'm sure that's a lot of like positive energy that you have, not even on your shoulders. It's more of, it's like above you and it makes you feel so blessed and happy and that all matters so much who you surround yourself with. And I've really been thinking about that in this past year because not being surrounded by anybody with quarantine made me really sit back and think about who it is I want in my life. And it meant cutting a lot of people out or losing a lot of people for good and bad reasons. Um, And it also meant bringing in new people, for instance, yourself and a lot of other amazing people who I've met through the internet and I've never met in person. And it's crazy because you all mean so much to me. And I've never even met you guys in person. And it's so it's really crazy. But it's really blows my mind that we have that platform, you know, just yeah. being out there now because, um, you know, technology has advanced so far in anything. And we have that platform to do video chat. We have that platform to text. We have that platform to FaceTime. We have the platform basically to just do video. And that's how you communicate versus in person but i hope to never get rid of the in-person situation ever i mean it'll be back yeah, it will <laughs> i'm not losing faith it'll come back yeah especially because i mean even like with being a musician and everything being in the recording studio how does that normally work for you like have you gotten a chance to go there do you have to record at home is that a different yeah. kind of strategic that you're dealing with right now when COVID first started, um, like when we first did our first interview, yeah. um, I there was no recording studios, nothing was open. There was no protocols, there was nothing in place. So I was stranded for a second and I was like, wait, I've always wanted to produce myself. So why don't I just do that? We're all bored anyway. So I bought a bunch of equipment on Amazon. I got some software and I built a little mini studio in my room. You can actually see it here. That's like my studio. So I have my mic here, yeah. got my computer, piano, everything just like the basics. And so I made cancer and I made um, South myself, but also every single song that you're going to be playing today, I recorded in my own room. 
I just recorded it myself. I sent my vocals to the producer and they put it together and that was it. So that's been different, but I have had the opportunity to go into the studio a lot, surprisingly, more recently, because now there's more protocols in place and they figured it out and some studios have opened up a bit. And so it's, we've been able to make it work. What type of protocols has your studio maybe had? Do you have to deal with like plexiglass or something to help with like- Testing. Testing and wearing masks for people who aren't singing in the moment. So okay. we just keep our distance and the studios, if they're big enough, then they allow more than one person in. But even when you're recording, sometimes you're in a recording booth in isolation. So it doesn't actually really affect anybody when you're in the booth alone. And exactly. they just make sure they clean in between, so. Well, the good news is that you don't have to sing with a mask on. Oh my God. <laughs> That would be really, really terrible. That'd be hard. I know Lady Gaga did it. Didn't she do that for like one of one of uh, the award ceremonies or something? I was like, wow. Like the amount of breath control it takes to sing in the first place and then add on top of another layer blocking that, that's, that's hard work. Thank you so much, John. We have comments that come up here when people comment. I think your mom commented as well, if you saw a little bit earlier. I did. Thank you, John. So... Um, no, but I think it's very strange and weird how the new strategics are going to be, but it is very exciting that you get a chance to go to the recording studio now. Yeah. But if you had the option to do either or, would you stick with going to the recording studio or is it easier to do it at your house? Like, do you feel more comfortable at your house now? Um, That's what's going to happen. Watch yeah. your well, come, <laughs> you're not going to want to go back to the recording studio. That's a really good, I never thought about that. Um. What I like about doing it at home is I can do it on my own time. And I've actually gotten really, really good at recording and um, producing. And so I'm confident in myself now. But what I like about working with other people is, again, it's the whole perfectionist thing. They'll tell me when to stop and they'll tell me when we got a good take. Whereas if I'm doing it at home, I'll record for hours and hours and then sleep, wake up, and then be like, oh, that's not good enough. Let's redo it again. And no one's there to stop me. And I just keep going. So that's the only thing. <laughs> well, difference though, if the person, the producer would be on Zoom while you're recording, they could tell you to stop. That is also, yeah, that's something that's good. Or sometimes I'll send them my rough takes and be like, hey, do you like this? Is it good? Should I redo it? And they'll be like, no, it's fine. Leave it that way. And so that's always a good thing to get a second opinion, yeah. But with your second opinion and stuff, when you're getting more um, information on it, do you ever feel that you might not like what you sent the recorder, like the producer? Do you? If I don't, I'll redo it before I send it to them. Yeah, yeah. Normally, do. but like, let's say it's something that I like, but I'm not sure if it's good. Then it's a good way to like confirm what I'm already thinking about or what you want to do. Mm -hmm. so we have South now. This song just came out. Was it Friday? Did it just come out Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. I just had to look at the calendar you got me. Um, it's Friday. <laughs> so it came out last Friday, last week. Yeah. And what do we feel as if behind this title? What do, we, what do you feel like? Why did you want to name it South? What was your pull towards it? Um, so South is about a true story that I went through mm -hmm. when COVID first started. I was seeing somebody who I really, really liked and I was up in Canada um, for pilot season before COVID started. And uh, when the border shut down, I had to come back to LA to quarantine with my family and be home. And um, that meant saying goodbye to that person. And that song is not only just about that incident, but also how dating has been going for me in general this past year where I'll talk to somebody and then all of a sudden like, we don't talk anymore. And it's like, oh, well that was just a waste of time. Uh, cool. So South is about when you kind of are talking to somebody and you know you're at the end of the relationship or you're at the end of like whatever is left between the chemistry and you want to hang on to what's left, but you know that it's going South. You know that it's going downwards. You know it's ending. And so South is just a synonym that I kind of used for when something is going downwards um, or not working out the way you thought it would. Like spiraling. Mm hmm. Wow. Well, that is very sad when you say it like that, but it's such a beautiful song. <laughs> So I want everyone to listen to it. So we're going to play South by Soma everybody Chaya. Everybody tune in. And we're going to play South. And we'll be right back to the DJ Danny Show on HamiltonRadio.net. Stream HR1 with Soma. All right. Now you got to understand there's all going to be a delay. So you're going to hear a delay, Soma. That's fine. And here it comes. Okay. She's going to hear her voice. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It could be over here. Like spiraling. Mm -hmm. 
so very cute. sad when you say it like that, but it's such a beautiful <laughs> song. So I want everyone to listen to it. So we're going to play South by Soma Chaya. Everybody tune in. And we're going to play South, and we'll be right back to the DJ Danny Show on HamiltonRadio.net and stream HR1 with Soma. Radio.net stream HR1 with so much on We all just heard South, a new released song on all platforms that you guys can find. I know we don't have Google Play anymore, but I'm sure it's on Spotify, Apple Play. I don't know if it's on Bandcamp. Amazon, uh, Pandora, Deezer, Tidal, oh, whatever you got. Exactly. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> and South. Now, you can definitely hear different tones in your voice with the acapella and your falsetto and the change. Was that something that you were looking to encounter in the song or did that just randomly happen like how deep into the music you got? Um, yeah, I've been exploring a lot with different tones in my voice with quarantine, yeah. especially with my own home setup. I've had the ability to experiment with my voice without feeling like I'm being judged by anybody. So I just would try weird stuff on the microphone and see where my voice sits. And then with this song specifically with South, I started writing it when I was just like walking my dog and I was just humming a melody. I was feeling an emotion and the melody came to me first. And I loved the way my voice did change. I loved how it was in the chest voice to start off with the sentence and then it would trail off into my falsetto. And I wanted to keep that because it felt like a very vulnerable thing for me to do vocally. Mm -hmm. And that reflected how vulnerable I was being in the song emotionally. And it also just, it shows your range. Yeah, yeah. What you want to maybe switch over to or how low you can go, how high you can go. I mean, what it what is your scale as soprano, do you know? Uh yeah, growing up I was always second soprano. Um I think now I've been working on my lower register a lot. It's something that I struggled with was singing low notes growing up. High notes would come to me very easily, but I couldn't what? sing low notes. Correct. It was like it was really hard. And so mm -hmm. I've been working on that a lot. And so building my um deeper tones in my voice, using my chest voice a lot more. I've been training myself to use it more. I've been so afraid, but I'm glad I finally am getting the hang of it. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like it was harder to organically get the change of going from head to belt? 
because it was easier for you to get your head correct. Yeah, it took time because I wasn't used to it. And I also, you know, there's an ugly way to switch between the two and there's a nice way to switch between yeah. the two. And I only so, the ugly way, so I would only be in my head voice for my whole life. And then <laughs> I had to do acting or anything when I was younger, it was, I, it would be like, can you do it in your belt? I was like, can I not? <laughs> can I do it in my head? Like, because it, that's exactly it. Yeah. But for, you know, just being a singer and stuff, I mean, does it come, did it come hard to you at first where falsetto was super easy, but chest was something that you had to train yourself with? Yeah, I did have to really work hard at it because growing up, I trained in musical theater and classical vocals. Mm -hmm. And in in classical singing, you really try not to use your chest voice too much. And mm -hmm. there's not a lot of switching between the two. You got to stay very fluid with your voice. And so you, I was I just knew how to use my head voice very well. And so I had to train myself with pop music to really lean into like the grit in my voice to use those different textures. And it's OK to make like weird sounds or have like a crack in your voice that adds character to it which I was like, no, that's bad. Like classical music, you're not allowed to do that. Like you can't have that. So yeah. I did have to train myself. But once I started doing it and started listening to how pop singers sang their music and I started writing more of my own songs for my own voice, it was a lot easier singing my own songs than other people's songs. And it was just, it felt like it came more naturally. Yeah, for sure. Would you say someone that was trying to become a musician, what would you say they'd have to learn more, their chest or their head? Or does it depend uh, on like, what type of genre they want to sing? I think it depends if they're going to be singing someone else's songs or their own. Because if you're singing someone else's songs, um, you've got to figure out if you want to sing it in their range or if you want to change the key um, mm -hmm. or if you want to make it your own or if you want to try to copy their vocal style and try to imitate it. But if you're writing your own music, you can write to wherever you love your voice to sit and you don't even have to branch out or try anything different. You can just have your spot in music and sit in your range and just have it be that. Just, um, yeah. yeah, but in my opinion, you should be singing what makes you feel comfortable and what how you sound beautiful to yourself. Because if you don't feel beautiful when you're singing, you're not gonna have that confidence when you're singing for other people. Man, I don't know what that was either. I think we have ghosts. <laughs> Is it Pepper, your cat? No, she's just sitting in the corner over here. I'm trying to do my best. Oh, she's chilling. Next <laughs> time, I'll pick her up and put her on camera if I have to, before she scratches my father's knee again, because she jumped right down when I had her. So, oh my God. But this is a life as a cat owner. Right? And Soma, you know this completely, you know? My you two ever, cats. Do you ever feel like you'd write a song about animals? Oh, I have. I have written so many songs about animals. I haven't released any, though, because they're kind of cheesy. <laughs> how, how cheesy? Give me the process that you have regarding cheesy. Like, was it, did it name your anim like your two cats' names? Was it one no. where it was, like, it rhymed? Was it something cute? Because if it was cute and playful, it's something you should be put on, like, social media or something. It was actually really depressing. <laughs> Complete opposite. <laughs> Why? I hope because <laughs> uh, right before I moved to LA, I thought that we were going to have to give up my cats because we weren't sure if in a small condo we'd be able to keep them. Oh. And so we actually gave them back to the shelter for a bit twice because we weren't sure if we were going to move here or not. So going through that and having that separation anxiety from my cats, my heart was broken. And the only way I knew how to release my feelings was through writing music. And so I wrote a really sad song about my two cats and it's, it's just really depressing. <laughs> That's so sad. That's so, sad. so that's why the world hasn't seen it because it's like too emotional. <laughs> wow. No, the craziest thing though is I mean, I'm thankful that you were able to keep your pets, but I understand your separation anxiety. That's what Pepper has with me. Um, so completely, I understand. But that was my problem because I wasn't here when she was little. I was gone for three weeks and she got separation anxiety because I wasn't here. So now she's like yeah. oh, he's on my left hip, I feel like I should say. As much as cats are assholes, they care about the like you guys so much. Like you become their best friend. Like I love it. See, can you tell she's an animal lover? It's the best thing. <laughs> the best thing you need to do is find a sponsorship for yourself. Like I know we have wicked cat clothing that you're mm -hmm. concerned helping about with um but you have to find a company that helps with cats. Yeah, that would be the best thing for you, especially because they could help, you know, sponsor if you have like a tour or something. 
That would be awesome. Yeah, something that helps with like um, adoptions and stuff like that and helping cats in shelters, especially black cats because black cats get neglected. And like, I know you have a black cat, I have a black cat. Like the reason I adopted a second one is because he was the only cat left and he was black. And I was like, I know that he's just gonna get left behind. No one's gonna adopt him. So I, I adopted him too because- no, it's so sad, that just happens. Like <laughs> you just leave him in the corner. This is the next song you have to write. How do <laughs> Black cat. <laughs> And give part to Wicked Cat Clothing for that because they're a black brand. There you go. <laughs> they have black clothes, Wicked Cat Clothing. You know, it's perfect. It all uh, works. And everything. So we have other songs. I know you released Virtual Love. That just came out last year. Parasite was before that, though, if I'm not mistaken. Because you said Virtual Love came out at the beginning of this year. It was January. And then Parasite was last year. Yeah. So Parasite came out what month last year? I think it might have been August or July of 2020. And then August. your music video? Um, and the music video? It came out like the same day, I think. Yeah. Or something like, yeah, because I remember yeah. you sent it over to me before you yeah. officially did the release and everything. So mm -hmm. Parasite, the title being Parasite, like you feel like it's something like bad girl vibe, right? Mm -hmm. um, bad bitch, bad me. Yeah. Riding an apple or it's a bad disease or a flash or something. So what did we feel as if when you were writing Parasite? I was feeling extremely vengeful for all those who had done me wrong in life. <laughs> and um, I had just gotten out of a really terrible couple of, not relationships, but like friendships, like a t couple of really bad friendships and toxic? a lot of people, oh, yeah, toxic no. friendships that, Cut that. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was thinking about that and even some toxic family relationships. Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on within my family, which sucks even more because when you're blood, it hurts that much more. Yep. And so this song Parasite was written as an anthem for myself to remind myself that I don't die. Uh, people can step on me. They can hurt me. They can do me wrong, but I will never die. Like I will never give up. And so this song was written by my alter ego to me saying, hey, Selma, like, toughen up. Like, let's get going, pick it back up. Like, let's go, keep keep going. Hey, Chris. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you just saw so, that. That's, <laughs> yeah. so that's what this song is about. And I hoped that it could be that for other people too. When they listen to it, they feel like the baddest version of themselves. They feel super confident in anyone who's done them wrong. They're like, um, no, you didn't. Mm -mm, not today. <laughs> the song though too, the beat, like you could throw electronic dance music right behind it. And it could be a club like song. Oh, 100%. I would hope that someday it's going to get remixed and we'll play it in the clubs when they open back up. <laughs> and then over to some of the DJs that you know that are randomly like featured on TikTok or something. And see yeah. if they can, no, I'm serious. See if they can mix with it and then send it back to you and see what they can do. Yeah. If they can make one of your songs like that, then obviously it'll become viral on TikTok because everybody will use it. But it's going to be something that a club might pick up. That is so true. And especially when it opens back up, hell yeah, I want to dance to that song. Exactly. Oh, of course you do. Because you'll be like, you know who the singer is? Me! <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So we're going to play Parasite, everyone. Just listen to the lyrics. Have fun. It. This song just makes you feel like you want to let everything go. But then eventually you're going to pull it back. So tune in, everyone. Parasite, Soma Chaya. We'll be right back. So DJ Nanny Show, HamiltonRadio.net. Stream HR1 with Soma. Exactly. Oh, of course you do, because you'll be like, you know who the singer is? She's trying to go in your face. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So we're going to play Parasite, everyone. Just listen to the lyrics. Have Am fun. I supposed to chase her? It, I mean, I know on Facebook like Live, but come here. Go, but then eventually you're going to play. So tune in, everyone. Parasite, Summer Child. We're right back to the DJ Nanny Show, HamiltonRadio.net. Stream HR1 with Soma. Anyway, I'm gonna you 
Stream HR1. We just heard Parasite by Soma featuring Pepper right over here. Um, I'm <laughs> she's getting aggressive with the song, I think. So I can't really move. Um, I might need Doc G to get this. <laughs> My ring got stuck on the sweater. Doc G, can you get this while I'm interviewing? Because I'm stuck. I'm literally stuck. Um, oh, Parasite is such a fun, filled action song. I feel like if you just listen to it alone, not even knowing who the singer is, like just getting an idea of what it is, it sounds as if, oh, I'm stuck again. It sounds as if it's just free filling. And the music video we have to talk about, okay? That had to have been fun. That had to have been extremely fun. Um, I know that you have to make sure that a lot of the people that are tuning in or watching it don't have epilepsy. I know my father, he couldn't, he couldn't watch it. And I felt bad, but like he, he, he couldn't watch it. <laughs> my own mother gets a headache watching that music video. <laughs> I, think my, I think my mom actually did, believe it or not. <laughs> my mom doesn't do well with flashing lights and loud noises. So she was just like, oh my God, this is intense. <laughs> so where did you get that idea behind the music video? Like, was this something that your manager said, like gave you an idea for? Was this something you did all on your own? Well, um, I actually don't have a manager, so I've been doing everything on my own. So everything is luckily right now up to me. So I get to make my own choices and I get to do what I want to do with my music, which is kind of awesome because I know in the future it's going to change. So I'm taking advantage of it while I can. And for this music video specifically, it was the second song I made during second music video I made during quarantine. And so I was kind of like limited to my own bedroom and my own home for places to go film. So I was like, how can I do something creative with these fucking white, with these white walls? <laughs> oh, no, real life. no, I'm That's just kidding. Okay. It's okay. Wow. Where it's okay. did this come from, girl? It's okay. Whew. With these white walls in my room. And I was like, what can I do with blank white walls? So what I did was I just recorded myself against the white wall. And then instead added really cool editing effects to make it more interesting. And so I experimented with different kinds of editing in Pro Tools, or not Pro Tools, in um, Premiere um, by Adobe, which was some software that I purchased during yeah. quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> F-bomb. It's okay. I was happens. like, did you just show your true colors? No, <laughs> I did. Well, I haven't heard you curse <laughs> since the last time I spoke to you. Where did that come from? Yeah, when we're on the phone. Ooh, it's like a sailor. <laughs> um. I don't know if we're taking calls, but I can have Soma say hi. Yeah, just have her say hi. Soma, we have John, if you can read that He works comment. with the radio station, by the way. Oh, He's amazing. A, he works Skylin wants to say hi to you. Yeah, of course. So just say hi. We're not, yeah, we're not taking calls right now. Oh, we're not taking calls. Oh, okay, okay. Hi, Skylin. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. And oh, yeah, you're going to get like new fans now from all. Yeah. And I hope you enjoy some of my music, the, the, the music that's appropriate. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> appropriate. Just sometimes what you say isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank no, you so much. Definitely though. appropriate. I don't really think a lot of your songs have explicit. I mean, I'd say it's like 50 50. Yeah, 15. Can, like, 15. I cross the coin. <laughs> 15, I believe, your was their first signal, right? Sing, single. Fire in Our Blood was the first one. That was totally okay. clean. 
Um, yeah. Forever Boys Totally Clean. 15 was my first explicit single. Yes. And yeah. that music video. I think I mention this every time. I love it. <gasps> the pigtails, the running. It's like probably the best. People actually get to know who you are personally when you watch a music video. And yeah. the craziness is throughout each music video, how they're different and they portion to each song. So yeah. when we saw Parasite's music video, wasn't even like, it felt like it was all over the place. It was, like I said, it has a lot of strobe lights, stuff mm -hmm. now with like people that have epilepsy won't be able to watch. But just getting an idea of what some of your music video inspiration wise is. I mean, you released South, the music video, right? Did you that, I filmed that one at Santa Monica. Yeah. The beach. I don't, yeah. I'm trying to remember if I saw that one. Maybe you didn't. Uh, it was like, did it came out the same day as the. Or did you send I only, the I only sent you the song because okay. I sent you the song before it released. So I didn't send you the music video. I was still editing it, I think. Maybe you sent me the music video for Virtual Love. I did. I sent you the music That's, for Virtual Love. Yeah, yeah. I saw that one. But um, no, I actually had not seen South. So why don't you tell me what South was music video wise based off of? I know you said it was on the beach. Um, what exactly um, were you doing for someone that hasn't seen the video? And a lot of you. Um, yeah, this music video was done at Santa Monica Beach, which is like very close to where I live. And the reason I wanted to do it there is because I had done a music video uh, by the Hollywood sign for my song Cancer. Mm -hmm. I had done a music video in my room for Parasite. I had done a music video in the streets of Los Angeles with Don't Fear the Snake. And I had done a music video in a studio with Bored. And so I was like, okay, I'm in LA, what other landmarks can I use in my music video? So Santa Monica Pier and the beach area was something that seemed really fitting for this song because it was about coming south. And when you think of south, you think of the beach, you think of the ocean, you think of warmer climate. And so that's what I wanted to show, especially because personally, this song was about me coming from Canada to LA and having to start over again. And so I really wanted to show wow. what LA meant to me and how LA is my home now. So that's, that's so what deep. That's super deep. Like how would anyone be able to find that out through the music video? You can't, you have to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I interviewed you. And tell us. Now, when I go south, I also think of somebody driving down maybe like a highway or something with their windows open, you know? Yes. Like, Having yes. their life with air blasting or their head out the door, um, the like the sunroof. That's something. funny you say that though, because in the Instagram music video, it's a little bit different from the YouTube music video. On the Instagram music video, one of the panels shows the um, P PHC highway. Mm -hmm. um, because I really imagine, and same thing like you just said, I really imagine when you're starting fresh or you're going south or anytime you, there's like a renewal in your life, I always imagine someone driving away from their old life, you know, leaving their past behind and just taking whatever belongings they want with them. And that's what it kind of felt like. So I really wanted to show the road and the highway and the yes. body, that travel feeling. Because yeah. that's exactly what I feel as if when you hear it, like it's just an idea kind of out there. And then it's also kind of through music industry and the base of what you're looking for, what do you feel as if maybe down the line that you would want to switch your genre over to? Cause I know you're very poppy and just different um, eras of it. Is there, yeah, a for sure. like, are you just trying to like um, fish around for different genres? Are you trying to like test out different ones? So I've been working on music for about three years now. I think I might've been 18, okay, maybe four years, four years. And I've been releasing it all under my name, Soma Chaya. And that's been amazing for me to be able to experiment and just not feel like any genre defines me and just do whatever I want. But I think going forward, I really do want to solidify my sound. And I've found what I like to make the best. And for me, that's hyper pop music, which is like extreme, extreme pop, very aggressive sounding pop. And the lyrics that I love writing are extremely aggressive from my alter ego's point of view. So going forward, it's definitely going to be a very prominent switch in the music that I'm making. Where do we feel like the switch might happen? Shorter down the line. Middle? I'm hoping, I'm hoping either by my birthday or right at New Year's. Like it's either gonna be in six months or yeah, a year. It just depends how fast. Fourth. Hmm? I said we need it before June 24th. <laughs> You're like, we need it now. <laughs> yeah, I know. June 24th, right? Yeah, June 24th. I'm sorry. You, I, you remember. I remember. <laughs> No, um, or somewhere, I guess it also depends 
versus Corona and like the pandemic and everything. Yeah. Is going, but maybe it'll be sooner than you think. Maybe you're, you can try to do midsummer. But the other thing is you also have to test out what you want to do. Not even if you're dropping music or um, snippets of what you're doing, like teasing wise, you have to portray a different personality. Yeah, so I'm going to be taking on my alter ego. Yeah. So uh, what type of accent do we feel this person's going to have now? Um, she's just going to have a very brutal approach to viewing life. Um, her name is Baby Brat, and that's going to be the title of the project that I'm starting. And Baby Brat is my alter ego, and she is my devil on my shoulder. She is like the voice who tells me to be stronger, to go harder, go faster, do more. And it's because me as a person, I am super soft. I'm super sensitive. It's the cancer in me. I, everything makes me emotional. So it's very, yeah. <laughs> very delicate. And it's more of like when you speak and how you react, because that's how you are, especially being an actress. And you said you want to get away from going as Somachaya as your actress name. Because when people hear Somachaya, as you said, being a musician, it's great that they can mark actress and musician together, you know? Yeah. You wanna have, yeah, that's been hard. You want to have, when people say, I book Somachaya for a role, that want to be, that's the position that you want to be the actress for. That's that precisely it. Yeah. I see myself as me. So yeah. like Somachaya is who I am and it's my soft, gentle, sensitive personality and I'm an artist and I love that people see me as an actress and that's how I want it to stay. But for my music, especially the music that I'm going to be releasing in the future, it's not things that I would say. It's not me, really. I'm writing from a whole character's perspective. And so I decided that it would be best for me to separate this character who I'm going to be writing from, from who I am. Because realistically, the lyrics, the music, everything, it's its not Soma. It's this character that I've built. And that's Baby Brat. It's Baby Brat. And where do we feel like this name maybe came from? Where do you feel like your inspiration came from, Muriel? It came from my tattoos. <laughs> so um, I have a tattoo. <laughs> I have a tattoo that says Brat on it. I've always loved the concept and the word Brat. Because to me, it means someone who defies the rules, who always puts up a fuss, who doesn't go with the flow. Mm -hmm. And so that's really who this character is. She pushes boundaries. She doesn't care what anyone thinks. And she's a brat about it. And then Baby um, is on this side. Baby Bell is my dog's name. And I was like, you know what? Sounds cute. Baby brat. That sounds cute. So <laughs> Baby Bell or is it Baby? It says Baby Bell. That's my dog's name. And so I took half of my dog's name and put it with brat. Okay, well, we all heard it here. That you heard it here first. Line. Slowly and surely, Soma is going to switch over her best to Baby Brat. And it'll be just different perspective for everyone to see. But, um, you know, just get a taste of what you want to put out there and how we can help and give you love back. Inspiration yeah. and everything. You guys can follow the project and everything that I'm going to be introducing on Instagram at Baby Brat club so that's going to be the tag for everything you can find that on soundcloud youtube etc so everything's going to be at baby brat club and for me it's at so much higher how do we feel like we want to start um promoting baby brat club i've been thinking about that a lot and i've got a lot of meetings set up this week with a lot of okay. people in the industry who i'm brainstorming with and we're getting down to like the nitty-gritty details now we're really trying to figure out a good release strategy and how we want to introduce her to the world. And what do we feel as if her outfit wise would be? Ooh, I've been thinking about her outfits a lot. <laughs> you know, I want to think about clothes all day long. <laughs> no, oh, of course, most definitely, especially when we shop all day. I mean, this is just what us people with cats do. I mean, this is literally what we do, so. That's it, online shopping, it's my life. Um, Yeah, so the color scheme for Baby Brat is black white pink and red i love valentine's colors and so i really wanted it to be girly but i want it to be like edgy girly so we're gonna keep like the reds and the blacks in there but also a lot of baby pink so she wears like black boots she's got that kind of combat feel and then she's also she dresses very minimalistically so usually just a crop top that's very cropped and high shorts that are very high <laughs> and what about okay so shorts you said what about like ripped jeans 
Yeah, anything like super distressed, anything kind of like edgy, but very cutesy at the same time. So Wicked Cat Clothing is somehow going to be a part of this more than she thought because mm -hmm. she has a whole bunch of crop tops on her website. Also, I love Wicked Cat Clothing's crop tops. They fit so well. <laughs> they're they're awesome. Tuning in. I don't know if she's tuning in or not, but she's in my. She's going to be on my show mid May, and I know I just got her crop top, Yay. and Chris got her hoodie. So he's getting that tomorrow. Um, but we just got her clothes, so we're going to have to take a couple pick and then swap it up and, you know, just start promoting her as being an influencer and just see how we can help her get some sales going on too. That's amazing. I'm so happy that you guys connected. Cause I was how like, get it just made sense. <laughs> how did you get involved with Wicked Cat Club? Through another friend actually too. They were recommended to me. My friend Neil, who's here in LA, he's a director and producer, writer and actor. Um, him and I connected at the Oscars pre party of 2019, I think like two years ago now, but him and I are both vegan and we are both, he's half Indian. So we connected and he's like, Oh my God, some you love cats. I have this friend who has a cat clothing company. You guys will love each other. And I'm like, please. <laughs> and it's, Cause that's what you wear. And a lot of what you promote right now with wicked cat clothing, that could be baby brat too. Oh, a hundred percent. Her crop tops all the way. And she even has cropped hoodies. So I was like, that's exactly what we need. Black is totally in the color scheme for Baby Brat, so all the way. Now, do we feel as if Baby Brat would do anything scary-wise, wear anything like horrifying, like horror? Oh, yes, yeah, well, yeah, like, 100%. Like butter or something, but more of like <laughs> a scary shirt or something, you know what I mean? Like, I can't think of anything like. I think she would do more of the blood, not the scary shirt. She would be the scary shirt, you know? Do you, so you would do the blood? Really? Yeah. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> Danny, I have I have a bottle of Halloween blood in my closet at all times because you never know when you need it. <laughs> and what is it used for next? <laughs> um, my music videos, mainly, <laughs> and photo shoots. Actually, I love, love, love. Actually, I'm trying to think, which music video is yours where you're on the car? Oh, there's a couple. Uh, Bored. Bored, I think, is the most yeah, recent one. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. I showed that one to my mother. Um, cause she was like, she was asking, she's like, what other songs does Soma have? Or, um, how is the type of her music and stuff? She just want to get a better feel. I showed her board and I was like, this song is probably boss. Actually, I'm sad we don't have it to play tonight, but I know Chris would love that song too. Like, yeah. I didn't send it cause it, it's got some swearing going on. <laughs> it's okay. But, uh, definitely that is. See, your music videos are very fun filled. So it makes me feel like I want to be a part of them. <laughs> I want to be a part of the background people. It's just, it's so. Girl, we'll get you in one of my music videos as soon as this stuff is done. Oh, yes, 100%. It just sounds so exciting. And it's just something different because each song that you put out there, you never know what you want to put behind the music video. It could be something 100% different from what the song is portraying. I know in the music video, you're just laying on a couch, petting a cat, singing. You know what? That's an idea. I might just use that. You know, like, but I, <laughs> be careful on that. I think I got that from Katy Perry, Hot and Cold. No, oh. I did the girl. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, like, maybe I'll use multiple cats. This says she can't come for me. <laughs> or, yeah, no, that should be fine. Because I don't think Taylor's like, <gasps> like that. But, no. no, that's, and then we have Virtual Love we're going to play. Now, this song, Virtual Love, this one, I feel like this is like an online relationship, right? Where, like, online so this song was written for a short film that um, uh, my friends are making in Toronto. So they contacted me and they're like, hey, we know you make music and we would love to have you write some songs for the short films that we're making. They're making a collection. And I was also going to be, act I, I acted in them. Um, and so I was like, 100%, I would love to. So they sent me the script. And upon reading the script, it really struck me as... Um, it's about, let's say, it, this premise is about if COVID doesn't end, what would our future look like? Oh. Living in a dystopian future where all of our contacts are online. And so reading the script gave me this such hollow and eerie feeling inside. And that's where that kind of um, melody came from. And so I contacted my producer, Arif, and I was like, hey, this is what I want to write about. And I sent him a couple ideas. He sent me the track and I wrote to it. And it ended up being about online relationships 100% and especially about the fact that at that point in time 
all of my friendships were all online and I hadn't even met some of them. You being one of the people who I'd never met a yeah. couple, like I was dating somebody at that time online and it was like, I hadn't met the person yet. And so it was just like, I was coming from a place of like disconnect and um, just kind of hollowness. That's where it came from. Well, virtual love is definitely something that a lot of people can experience with the pandemic. But I do have to say, being quarantined and getting to know someone, that's how I met Chris. And the craziest thing to this day is, who would have thought that quarantine would let you find love? It's the craziest right? thing. Right? So we have to get you on board with that. But that's going to be- Girl, help me. I need help in that department. Yes, but we have to do that after your, you know, because you have to worry about your change of your name and your personality and everything over. That's your biggest focus right now. If I got you distracted and your like people that are in the industry was not okay with all that, we don't need any of that to happen. So that's yeah. exactly it. <laughs> career, career is my um my relationship right now. <laughs> goal. It's your number one goal. Um, it's just a stepping stone to see what else you can put out there the highest. Yeah, definitely. So we're gonna play virtual love. Um, everyone just take a listen to the song. I mean, you guys should definitely check out the YouTube video. Uh, Soma, you want to give out your YouTube account where people can find your music videos and your social media? Yeah, all of my music right now is under Soma Chaya, S-O-M-A-C-H-H-A-Y-A. And um, you can find that on YouTube. Hi, Nick. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can watch the music video. I made the music video myself and I edited it myself. I made, I recorded the vocals like I told you in my bedroom and wrote the song myself too. So it's very personal. So tune in guys, we're gonna play Virtual Love. We'll be right back with DJ Danny Show on HamiltonRadio.net stream HR1 with Virtual Love, so much higher. And um, you can find that on YouTube. Hi, Nick. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, you can watch the music video. I made the music video myself and I edited it myself. I made, I recorded the vocals like I told you in my bedroom Goodness gracious. So we're back to the Jenny show on Hamilton Radio.net stream HR1. You guys just heard Parasite by So Much Higher. 
Virtual love. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, virtual love, yes. Wow, <laughs> like right over my head. Your mind is still on Parasite, we're good, it's a good song. <laughs> virtual love sends that a sounds. Okay, I had like a huge vision for you. I know it's too late because you already did the music video, but for some reason I was getting you dressed as a clown in a circus. Ooh. Just like, cause like you better run now. That you creepy, know? eerie kind of like. No, definitely. And like, I'm seeing you as like a ringmaster or something. It's totally hot. more than anything. <laughs> But uh, Baby Brat can definitely do something down the line like you that. You know what? That would be really cute. Like, you know, one of those, like, circus hats and, like, the cane thingy, kind of like the greatest showman. Like, I know. Really like that. Yeah. I, <laughs> I love that movie. I love more than anything right now that you just said that. Was perfect. <laughs> um, I love the greatest showman also. But definitely right now, like, just big on the internet, especially, like, on TikTok, TikTok and everything. I see a lot of like people dressed up as clowns. I mean, I know we have the one clown, the one that's like dressed up as it on TikTok is like seven million or higher now, friends and followers on like he's wow. very but there's so many people that are like woman wise that are doing makeup wise for that. And it just looks so good. I'm not telling you to dress up as a clown because I mean, don't dress up as a clown. But it's more the fact that you can definitely um experience or i want to try to say let's say specialize you need to get yourself into some sfx makeup that would be dope i definitely have some friends who are great at special effects makeup because i went to fit them the fashion institute college and they have a whole program for makeup and so a lot of my friends are makeup artists um that would be super cool because i love horror movies i love things that are creepy and scary so we're definitely going to experiment with that in the future and i just think that's like sorry there's a gnat in here and it's not the crap out of me i just think that that would be perfect for you even being baby brat something down the line yeah but that would be so fun just the way that song was very eerie it should have been in the circus but honestly I, believe it or not I, the pandemic made it worse so there's always new songs and there's always like new ideas. And so you've got good ideas. You're definitely going to help me come up with something in the future. Yes. I know. And literally future, just send me an audio <laughs> clip of your one hook and I can probably help you come up with a music video. Not a bad that. idea. I might send you the next one because I'm releasing a song every single month. So I'll send you next month's song. Yeah. I was going to say, are you releasing it every like middle of the Friday on the month or how does that the work? The last Friday of every month. So any, it doesn't matter what day that or what date that falls on. It's always going to be the last Friday of the month. So I think next month for, or actually this month, oh my gosh, it's March. I'm so for March. Oh, we know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was still thinking it's February. I still write 2019. I have an issue. So, um, Two years. Uh, so for March, I think March 26th. Yeah, March 26th, I'm going to be releasing a song. This one, I can give you the title of it. It's called Nebula. And it's about stars and space right? and galaxy. That's exactly what I felt. What Maybe do you mean? <laughs> astrology too yeah it's totally about like just being part of the universe and it's a very like metaphysical song so it's super spiritual very out there this is still soma still soma yeah i'm so gonna release all the stuff i have left until baby brad is ready to go okay because baby brad needs some time to baby brad is still like you know she's still building she's still yeah. growing yeah exactly. yeah we're still we're still incubating her for a bit <laughs> I love that. That's oh my god, that's amazing. So we are gonna be really excited for March 26th. Now you're gonna be posting that on all your social media so people can find it yeah. or basically um just follow on to your YouTube. What is your YouTube account? Soma Chaya, S-O-M-A-C-H-H-A-Y-A. -A -A. You can search yeah. that into Google, YouTube, whatever social media you like. I just don't use TikTok, so don't look for me. Hey, we had you on TikTok though. What I happened? know you had me on TikTok for a bit, and then I got off. <laughs> but there's so much you could do on TikTok. I know that's the problem. It eats up all my time. <laughs> well, you give yourself a little bit of time. You probably can even show people like vegan coffee recipes on there. I could. Or I could. Tea, or you know what you drink. <laughs> Just pour water in a cup. Enjoy. This is the that's, best. That's me. <laughs> Juice when you could drink water. 
precisely. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, but the coffee that I drink every morning, I get canned coffee. So I just drink it from the can. What is so I don't have to make it. Yeah, it's canned coffee. Like I, it, we get it on Amazon and you just open the can like a bottle of soda or like a can of soda and you just drink it straight and it's just black coffee. So and it's kind of brand? boring. What brands? It's called uh, J Street. J Street? J Street. J-A-Y Street. And it's just like black coffee in a can. <laughs> but you don't put any any like fake milk or anything. Do you use oat milk? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I put flax milk in it, but most of the time I like it black. Wow, there's such thing as flat flax milk now. Flax milk, yeah, it's so good. It's so creamy. It's it's really good. I just tried oat milk the other day. I don't know how. Oh, girl, you, we need to get you hot up. You need to try flax milk. <laughs> right. All the milk is so last year. Come on, oat milk so last year. <laughs> just tried like the chocolate oat milk. It was so good. So now I have to look for flax milk. I'll send it to you as a late birthday gift. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much. I'm so glad you've been here today, Soma. Is there anything else that you want to let your fans know or just have them stay tuned on your social media for upcoming posts? Yeah, for 100%. Social media is where I connect with everybody. So find me on Instagram. That is where I'm the most active on Instagram and YouTube. Um, Soma Chaya, S O M A C H H A Y A. I was about to say dot com, not dot com. I know. Um, <laughs> Do you have a I used to have a website, took it down. It was too much work. <laughs> but yeah, that's the best way to connect with me. That's where all the updates will be. But aside from that, um, follow me on Spotify because I'm going to be releasing a new song every single month for the rest of this year. And so that's something to look forward to. That is something to look forward to. And you still have to look through that for me so I can get you at my job. Yes, I do. Spotify, if that's something. Or my boss has to upgrade. Like, I know. <laughs> something like that. Cause they it looks like they upgraded a lot of the stars, like for Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna look into that. I want to figure it out. Yeah, when you get a chance. Well, girl, thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm thankful that you gave me the rest of your time before you eat dinner, because I think you're gonna eat dinner soon, shortly. I'm actually gonna have to record another audition after this. So you are okay. Back well, to work. <laughs> definitely. Thank you. Is there anything? that we can say regarding maybe mid future for acting do you feel like you're still trying to get more like more roles or stuff you're looking at or are you just trying to push more with your music um i'm always going forward with both at once um they're really easy to bounce off of with each other so i always make sure that i'm putting my full attention to both and as for acting the only thing that sucks with acting is i actually can't talk about anything until the production announces stuff they make us sign ndas and contracts so my lips are sealed until until further notice but as soon as something comes up i will be blasting my social media i'll be telling you i'll be yelling it in the streets so gonna <laughs> um, you are gonna be you're gonna be like <laughs> you're gonna be bombarded with texts from me calls from me facetimes everything so <laughs> um yeah as soon as i'm allowed to talk about it oh I will let you guys know. We also have to somehow get you onto um, a couple of talk shows, whether it's like James Corden or Jimmy. Hell yeah, Jimmy Fallon. Oh, I grew up on that. We or Ellen. I mean, that's something that, um, you know, future down the we're going to try to do. But My goal is to be on those shows when COVID is done so, so there can be a live studio audience. Because I know. <laughs> that's the real experience. <laughs> my goal is to be there front row with Christopher and we'll be cheering you on. Girl, and backstage too. Gosh, I can't wait to meet you. Thank you so much for having me on, Danny. I love talking to you. I love talking to you too. And thank you so much for my birthday gifts. I, oh, I of course. I you are you like your so, sweet, so thank you. And happy advanced birthday. I'm, I'll text you at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all so much, guys. Tune in. Um, every Tuesday, I have a show here at 6.30 to 7.30. My guest always varies. I believe I have Casey McLean, who is a pop, uh, eerie rock next week. I'm going to have to give you her information because you guys probably might have the same kind of tone uh, for future. But thank you again, Soma, for your time and being and here. Thank you, everyone, yeah, for listening and tuning in. It's so nice to, to chat and to get some socialization. We will get an update <laughs> You probably within next year or mid after Baby Brat comes out. And we'll yes, you Baby Brat. <gasps> we'll interview Baby Brat. How's that? Can we play her songs or you gotta wait? Uh, play any of her songs. You're more than welcome to play any of her songs now. 
Doc G was just asking if he has your permission to play the songs now. They're all out. So play anything you would like. Yes. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Perfect. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you so much, Soma. Have a great night, everyone. Bye. Bye.